Welcome to Jets Rewind. I'm uh, Marty Schupack in New York, uh, joined by Ray Clifford in Ohio, Ralph Sharega, who's uh, back up in Boston, and uh, we're recording this on uh, Friday, November 10th, and uh, just a little shout out to all our veterans. I guess today's Veterans Day. Is it today or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Well, a shout out to all our veterans for tomorrow. And uh, the old line, thank you for your service. Ray, how you doing today? Good. Another uh, early nice day here. Getting a little cooler, but sunny. Right, right. All weather. Slowly getting cooler. Ralph, welcome back to Massachusetts. How you doing there? Great. We got weather reports from all over the country right here. You know, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. But anyway, you know, they, um, unfortunately, it's another... Uh, uh, I guess Sunday night game. I can't stand these games. That I'm are- sure the networks love having the Jets on now. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that you know the the week that they played the Giants, one o'clock Sunday was like the perfect day, except it, for it, the game. <laughs> yeah, it's been a disaster. We're going to get into Robert Sala and everything going on with the uh, our quarterback or our unquarterback. But Ralph, you <laughs> have a uh, you have a classic Jets trivia. Yeah. So- Let's okay. have it. Okay, so we all know that the cradle of quarterbacks was always was Western Pennsylvania. It was Unitas, Namath, George Blanda, Montana, Marino, Kelly. But I think there's a new one now. Can you name two quarterbacks who were born in the state of the great state of Connecticut who were in the NFL? Connecticut. Yeah. Okay, so we're not talking about Pennsylvania. No. That was just like a segue. That was a, a yeah. That was sort of a uh, changing of the guard. <laughs> are they now? Would you tell us? Are they starting this? No, Sunday? they're no. not. No, they're just in there. Two quarterbacks. Well, it's going to be a lot of guesswork, but you know, <laughs> I have one also. I'm going to add on. All right, uh, I looked at the common players for the Jets and the Raiders. There's a whole list of them, a deluge of list. Oh. But I look closely. There are four quarterbacks that played for both teams. Quarterbacks. I'm going to give you guys two of them, and then I'm going to have you try to guess the other two by the end of the show after Ralph's great trivia question. <laughs> four yeah. quarterbacks who played for both the Raiders and the Jets. The first one is Dick Wood. He played for the Jets in 63 and 64. That's 1963, 1964. And the Raiders <laughs> in 1965. Now, the other one, I guess, Ray, you're going to have to help me out because I have no <laughs> recollection. The name is Marquise Tuasosopo. Yeah, yeah. He played on the Raiders. He the played Raiders. on the Raiders from 2001 and 2008. And this is the killer. He played for the Jets in 2007. So I guess he went back to the Raiders. Yeah. You guys well, remember well, him? Well, yeah, I, I remember from the Washington. name. Yeah, from Washington. That's right. University of Washington. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I looked him up from Washington. But do you ever recollect him being on the Jets? No, I don't. I don't either. But apparently he was. I don't know if he yeah, was. But did he play? A cup, of co- cup of coffee, cup sounds of coffee. like. Yeah. Probably, probably on the roster, Ray. I'm not sure if yeah. he ever played. I don't think he ever got in a game, but who knows. Yeah. So you guys have to come up with the other two players who played, quarterbacks played for both right. the Jets okay. Okay. and the Raiders. But you know what? Uh, unfortunately, I was almost sure that uh, – Robert Sala was going to announce like Wednesday that he's going to make a little change and he's going to use his classic line. We're going to have a reset for Zach Wilson. But apparently he thinks that the Jets at four and four and still incredibly in the playoff hunt has their best chance with Zach Wilson. And it, it, Brings up a lot of questions as these these two guys we have for backup quarterbacks, like what are they doing there? Or for what reason does Zach Wilson give the Jets the best chance to win? I just want to get Ralph's reaction first, and I want to hear from Ray. Go ahead, Ralph. Marty, I have been on a, a Bob Robert Sala fan since the day they signed him. I think he's a class guy, but he lost me this week. When his answer to the question, are you going to – are you going to replace Zach Wilson was I'm not going to replace Zach Wilson because the whole, the offense is a systemic problem, which it is. It's not all his fault. And which if you deduce from that means he can't bench anybody because it's not anyone's fault completely. 
So I think that's the most ridiculous statement. I don't know what he's thinking. He said a couple of dumb things this year, like embarrassing the other quarterbacks, taking the fifth. Um, he, he lost me with that. It, last year, we went through the same thing. People started saying, we want to see Mike White. We want to see Mike White. And Mike White had all he had to show for himself was one Cincinnati game. And people are saying, he's now better. Well, it turns out he was a little better than Zach Wilson. Now, I watched highlight film films of uh, Trevor Simeon last night. I looked over his resume, his stats, and I can tell you that he's a better quarterback than Mike White. And there's no question in my mind. Really? And yes, he is a better quarterback than Mike. He's much more mobile. I was just he's say got, he's mobile. He's got a nice touch. He might not have quite a strong arm, but I think he's more accurate. I, he could be serviceable like Mike White was. And I, I just think that, like last year, Sal is waiting too long. He's waiting until the, the uh, locker room blows up, and it's a mistake. He should get ahead of this because it's going to happen. We know it's going to happen because – Wilson, for the first few weeks, looked a little bit better than last year. His last two weeks, he's regressed back to the, doing the same stuff as he did last year. And I, I just see it getting worse. So I'm really disappointed and frustrated because, frankly, Mike White was made the game somewhat entertaining. You know, the Minnesota game, they lost it, but that was a fun game, you know. I, I just can't stand watching Wilson. It's just painful. As Marty says in the middle of our, it's unwatchable. And uh, <clears throat> I, I just, as far as Sal goes, if he's going to hitch his wagon to this guy, well, he, he's going to, he's going to go up in flames. R Ralph, I just want to follow up with a couple of questions before we get to raise thoughts. Uh, you, you saying that he's mobile, Trevor Simeon, more mobile than Mike White. Oh. Mike White wasn't mobile at all. Yeah, he's got a little, he's got some mobility. He might not be as, as as athletic as Zach Wilson, but the problem with Zach Wilson is he doesn't know how to use his athleticism to turn bad plays into good plays. He, he just runs around and gets tackled at the ankles for fifteen yard losses. But you know, I'm not saying he's the he's the. I'm just saying. If Mike, Mike Mike White, you know, you watched Tyler Badgen last night from Shepherd, which I don't know if that's a college or a dog breed, you know, it's like, <clears throat> I mean, we just, when you watch Mike White go against the Bears last year, it was such a revelation to watch a quarterback do normal things and react in normal ways. And I think that's what you get with, uh, with Simeon as well. Nothing great, but just something mediocre, which I think would be enough with that defense to win some games. So I'm just totally frustrated. Oh, okay. I, I want to hear from Ray, his reaction, but I also want to follow up that question after we hear from Ray about, can there be pressure on Robert Sala that he has to play Zach Wilson, either from the general manager or from the owner? But I want to hear from Ray, though, his reaction to not making a change first. Well, that my my reaction was just that. I mean, when he took the fifth in that interview, it made me immediately question if he has any say on the offensive side of the ball. I think they let him run things from the defensive side because this is his defense. These are his guys, and and I think he's comfortable there. But I have a – I don't know. It just comes across like he's kind of being given a, a – a, a play card for how the offense they want it run, you know, just give him the, the agenda. Who, who and, do you think's giving it to him though? I'm curious. I, I would guess it's mainly Douglas and maybe, you know, who knows if Woody's getting involved with it, what he wants, but um, I think it's probably, uh, my guess would be Douglas has a lot of say over whether or not to, when or if to bench Zach um, I, I just, it just doesn't sound like he has free reign. I think he does have free reign on the defense and that that's, that's just, you know, it's, it's just my opinion, but it, it's how it comes across to me is that he's, he's one of these guys who he, he takes care of the stuff he's comfortable with and what the, what the brain trusts, whether there's more than one of them, or if it's Joe Douglas, take care of what goes on on the other side of the ball. By the way, the, the back page of the New York Post was on uh, Nathaniel Hackett uh, kind of quoting him, saying, I'm lost. I'm not sure what to do anymore. 
Oh, which is a lot for confidence, which is incredible. Maybe he can join Sam Darnold. We'll see ghosts together. Uh, but I want to <laughs> ask Ray a follow-up, and then, Ralph, I want you to answer. Ray, we had uh, two coaches that were fired in the NFL, and they went on to have success in the Super Bowl. One is legendary Bill Belichick, who was fired from the Cleveland Browns. And the other, I guess it's uh, is it Michael Shanahan? Is Mike that Shanahan. Yeah. Mike Shanahan, yeah. who was fired from the Raiders right. and went, went on to have success with the Broncos. So my question to you, Ray, because I happen to really like Robert Sala too, is he the type of coach you see that if it doesn't work out with the Jets, he'll be successful in his second job because he'll make demands? Uh, he just doesn't across come across to me like the guy who's going to be at least not in front of cameras. I don't know what he's like behind the scenes, but he just seems a little more, uh, I don't say mild mannered, but just he, I think he, uh, he likes what he's comfortable with and, and when he has free reign, but I don't know that he, at this point he could handle being in charge of an offense uh, in the sense that I'll decide who plays and who doesn't. He probably, you know, and I said I don't know who might be uh, deciding for him. I think he might be uh, running it by what Hackett thinks, as long as, as well as Joe. And uh, so, you know, I think he could be better because I think he's learning a hell of a lot from this this run. If it if it doesn't, you know, go much right. further. But uh, so yeah, if he gets in the right situation. But if some you know some other team that's struggling. You know, I think he'll make their defense better, but I don't know if I don't know if he can be an offensive coach at this point. Right. And uh, Raph, I want you to answer the same thing on the second job. And I gave you two coaches who were yeah. successes, but two failures were Eric Mangini and Rex Ryan in their second uh, head well, coach. There have been plenty. Well, uh, Josh McDaniels, uh, you know. Right. That's true. Well, yeah. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's but, a career bust. Usually, but, usually it's two and out, though. Is that right? right. Yeah. I so, mean, McDaniel actually has gotten three offers. He he rejected one at the last minute. But uh, he bailed on the Colts. Yeah. Um, I, I, I uh, with all due respect to Ray, I just cannot believe that Joe Douglas is forcing him to play. Uh, I think they're both on board with Zach. I think they are still enamored with Zach's physical traits, even though, as we say every week, Joe Montana. 75% of quarterbacking is from the neck up, and Wilson doesn't have it from the neck up, and that's why he's a failure. Uh, I think they're enamored with it. I think they're enamored with his ceiling, which is a higher ceiling than either of the other quarterbacks on the team has, but his floor is lower, way lower, and that's where he is right now. And I'll tell you another reason I think I think he's part of being soft on Wilson. And we were going to, we're going to discuss this with, with Alan Lazard. Alan Lazard, some, someone asked him, you know, what's going on with Alan Lazard? You know, are you going to bench him? He said, well, Alan Lazard, you know, he's been having his problems, but we had a really nice talk. And he's going to, he wants to do better. To me, Robert Sala, he treats these guys like millennial snowflakes. I really believe that. I think he's just too soft on them. He doesn't want to throw anyone under the bus. You know, Bill Belichick is the other extreme. You fumble on Bill Belichick, you sit for three games. One fumble, you're done. I saw, I mean, him, I, I saw him bench a guy when he bobbled the punt. Yeah. <laughs> I, he, you know, it's extreme. But there's 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 some happy medium. And I think Sal is on the other end. And I don't think there's another team in the league that Zach Wilson would still be caught starting for at this point with his resume. I think it's an embarrassment. And I don't think Woody Johnson likes the idea of sitting in the stands, listening to all these color guys rip on Wilson, the fans boo him, the team never scoring. I cannot believe that he's like forcing them to play this guy who is an utter failure and he's just ruining the team. So I, I really think the, he and Douglas are on board with this. All right. I want to get to that next question, which Ralph mm. touched on. But I think a bigger thing is with playing Zach, and we all spoke about it, you hear it in the media, is the splintering of the locker room. Which yeah. it, I don't care what they say. I'm telling you it's happening right now. With social media, with the amount of these guys have with their families and friends, they're going back and forth in private. And uh, they're, you know, they're not complimentary to Zach Wilson at all. 
I know that's going on. I, I again, if you gun to my head, I swear it's going on. Now, as far as throwing anyone under the bus, and Ray alluded to the quote that uh, about uh, when Michael K was interviewing Robert Sala, and he he made a statement about replacing him, and he said, "I plead the fifth. That's the closest I ever heard him coming to throwing anyone under the bus. All right, I want to ask Ray. Ralph mentioned Alan Lazard. Do you, do you think the Jets should really bench him or maybe just cut down on the number of snaps he has in the offense? Uh, I think I'd probably do the, the latter. I don't think I'd flat out bench him because, you know, he's very, he's, it might be in his head. He's, he's had some bad drops, but then he'll make a, he's like, a, he's kind of like, we haven't changed much from Corey Davis and then he'll make a, He'll make a catch and, you know, you're like, okay, he can do it. It's kind of like with Zach. He can do it, just he needs to do it more consistently. Um, but I was a little more, not just the drops, but the penalties. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but I don't think they'll flat out bench him. I think, uh, I think they might mix in, you know, others, Malik Taylor and maybe some others more would be more likely what I think they'd do because, you know, you just can't, you just can't give up on the guy completely. You got to, you know, keep trying to get him involved and, and right. Maybe he'll come around. Ralph, what's your thoughts? I mean, would, would, if they benched him, would Aaron approve of that? <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's who's the I, I don't think they're going to bench him because like I said, they, they don't hold players accountable. There's so many players making stupid penalties and nobody's ever held accountable on this team. Um, and, and, and just, just to go backtrack about Wilson, you know, we, we all, I loved Wilson coming out of college and we all know that it's not all Wilson's fault, but you replace guys that you think have a chance of improving the team and you can't tell until you do it. And this team is his, historically awful, their offense. It's just mind-boggling how bad it is. And for them not to address any aspect of it, to me, is criminal as far as coaching goes. Uh, I don't think they'll bench uh, Lazard. I think they should. I think they need to start letting guys know that if you don't produce, you're not going to play. Give Malik Taylor, give Brownlee, Gibson, give them more looks. Uh, yeah, I'm for that, but I don't expect it'll happen. And I just want to point that too, with the quarterback. And I, I've been saying this ever since we started the podcast, a really good quarterback will raise the level of the play around him and a lousy quarterback, it'll be lowered. If you remember last year when Mike White came in, there was a real, real stimulation with that offense. It wasn't just Mike White throwing, but mm -hmm. it was, they were playing better for the guy. And I think it's a both, conscious and subconscious thing with who's in there at quarterback, even for the offensive line. I truly believe that too. But I want to ask Ralph, I'll start with you as uh, we move along. We're going to get to my five key points in a few minutes. And then of course the classic over unders, but Ralph, who do you think is going to rush for more yards this week? Uh, Brees Hall, who seems to be in a little bit of a rushing slump or uh, Josh Jacobs of the Las Vegas Raiders. I'm going to go with Jacobs because I, I just, you know, the Jets can't block from the run. I mean, every time Brees Hall gets the ball, there's a guy unblocked on him like a yard into the backfield. It's ridiculous. And I don't see that getting any better. So I'm going to say Jacobs. All right. How about you, Ray? I want to say that the Jets will bounce back a little bit and give him a couple holes to run through and maybe he'll break a big one. So I'm going to say Brees, but I'm not 100% confident on that. But because uh, the Raiders, yeah, they have some good – uh, some good defensive guys, but they aren't a shutdown defense. Teams have moved on them. Um, the problem is, and I think it's the problem every week, is that nobody fears our passing game, so they can uh, concentrate on stopping Brees Hall. And they, you know, so sure, there's somebody there. They don't worry about, you know, they don't worry about getting torched through the air. So stop the run, and you stop the Jets at this point. Okay, they. I'm going to say also that the. Uh, it's going to be Josh Jacobs. Uh, he's a heck of a back, and uh, I'm going to get into him a little in a moment when I go into the uh, five key points. Uh, but before I do, you guys are going to love this. I was fortunate. I had dinner 
with uh, some high school buddies. We have a holiday dinner every year. It's a bunch of 70 year old guys trading their PSA counts. It's a lot of it's a lot of fun, but I just want to just bear with me. It's going to take a little bit. There's like 12 names. A lot of Jet fans, a shout out. Two of the biggest Jet fans, Howie Freeman, Glenn Krausheim, and Roy Catter, who helped organize with me. And uh, Ralph's going to recognize a lot of these names. Legendary, oh, yeah. legendary Stu Rubin, who won the prize. He came down from Maine. Keith Wolf, Paul Piliero, the great track and field and uh, cross-country coach. Lonnie Wong, legendary Roy Elvold, and Norman Dachman was there. Hey, and also Mark Epstein, and also the uh, epic Steve Winsell. I want to thank all you guys for showing up, and I look forward uh, to staying in touch. And and next year, and Ralph, what was interesting is with all these uh, friends there and a number of Jet fans, I won't mention who, but one or two of them, they said to me, and I think it's appropriate for today, they said, Marty, we I listened to the show, but why is Ray always late? He's always <laughs> late every week. And Ralph, I mentioned to Ray as we're waiting for you. I said, this is really time appropriate how we're waiting for Ralph. So I, you know, Ray, I was making up excuses that, you know, he's a single guy that takes care of every cat in Columbus, Ohio. He's got a lot of obligations. But I thought it was really funny. Okay, let's get to the five points right away. I knew you'd love that, Ray. Ralph, yeah. a little a little music, Ralph. Dun, 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 All right. Dun, dun, dun. The, the, the Raiders, the Raiders <laughs> change coaches. They have the former giant. Um, what the heck's the guy's name? Antonio Pierce. <laughs> Antonio Pierce coaching. But point number one, protect the quarterback. I mean, we're going to say the same things every week, but I want to let Brees and Garrett run free, keep five to seven players at home, and and you must chip block Max Crosby. He's going to be living in the backfield. Point number two, you must stop the run. Antonio Pierce said he's going to emphasize the run. Josh Jacobs had a 100 yards. He actually got stuffed for a minus three, so he didn't really get 100. I want to rotate Solomon Thomas with Quinton Jefferson, who's having a really under the radar, very good season. And I would move John Franklin Myers both inside and out. John Franklin Myers has been playing much better the last couple of weeks. Aiden O'Connell is in his third NFL start. Move guys up in the box. Force him to pass. We have the secondary to make coverage. Point number four, I had mentioned it last week. I have had enough of two players, Jordan Whitehead and Jamie and Sherwood. Jordan Whitehead is, I, I can't understand why they don't give Ash and Davis more uh, reps. I want mm -hmm. Ash and Davis in there more. I also wanted to activate a rookie who I loved in preseason, his speed, Zaire Barnes. Activate him and play Chase Surratt more, more snaps, but get Jamie and Sherwood, who's the new Claude Reigns as the invisible man. And it's amazing. And you guys mentioned it. Salah gets in love with these players and he's overly, overly loyal and he won't switch. Look at Billy Turner last week. Ralph pointed it out. I mean, Brilliant. he gave up 15 pressures. And the last one, again, uh, point number five, which I call broken record number five, target Xavier Gibson Moore and Malik Taylor. You both said it. I want them to do that. These guys are the couple of receivers, players on a the team. They could get some separation. So, Ray, let me have your feedback and any or all of the points I made. Uh, I think obviously, you know, hopefully, and, and I would put it more on Hackett than Salah chipping Max Crosby, I think is a, a big one. And, you know, we don't use Ruckert enough in the passing game yet, but he can block like hell. So why, you know, why not have him in there on, on plays like that to help with Crosby or whoever they, they think might be the, the dangerous one on any given play. Um, I, I haven't liked, Whitehead's play since you know his first season when I think it was the Bengal game early in the year when he thought he was Ronnie Lott and tried to blast T Higgins at midfield and bounced off him and Higgins went 50 yards for a TD um so if they change him out I have no problem with that one um I I can't say on Surratt or, or Zaire Barnes I, I wouldn't mind seeing him but you know I don't I don't see what goes on in practice so I don't know if these guys look any 
any more prepared to handle game action on, on a regular basis uh, at this point. Um, I think our defense is fine for the most part. I mean, we we tend to get off to a slow start, but, you know, you look at it and it's like if we could score any points, we'd probably only have one, maybe two losses. But um, so I, I think he makes some fair points. Uh, um, I, I can't. I'm so frustrated with the offense that I, I have no idea how to, you know, if we, if they aren't going to change quarterbacks, I don't know how to suggest anything different than, you know, what's going right. on. All right, Ralph, any uh, feedback on my points? Yeah, I, mean, so points? I can't remember them all, but they all sounded reasonable. Um, you know, the whole idea with it, Jordan Whitehead is just another example of a guy that, you know, is not accountable, you know, in this team. Um, and, uh, you know, the Max Crosby thing, I think, is your most important point. And uh, they didn't do it with Bosa. Supposedly, uh, Billy Turner's got a hand problem, which is probably phony baloney, but they're too, they don't want to throw him under the bus and, and bench him. So they'll they'll give him a hand problem. I assume they'll move Max Mitchell back out, which, you know, Max Mitchell's not great, but he's better than Billy Turner. Um, so that might help a bit. Ralph, uh, what's, what's your take the last few weeks on – Quentin Jefferson and John Franklin Myers. You know, and I'm also going to mention a guy that we're always down on, Solomon Thomas. I think yes, he's playing, he's playing exactly. better. He, he definitely is playing better. Um, he is he is producing. And I, I think all those guys are. I have no complaint, like Ray said, with the defense. Now, Jamie and Sherwood, I'm not a fan of. I don't really see him on the field that much. Is, is, is he is he playing other um, very much other than on special teams? Maybe occasionally. Tomorrow, I um, yeah. You know, I, Chas Surratt, I like, and he's seasoned. I, I could, I, I prefer him to Sherwood on any any reps that he gets. Um, but you know, Zaire Barnes, I don't know if he's ready yet. I do like him. Um, I do too. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't, uh, I don't remember what your other. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, filling the box for this guy, Aiden O'Connell, definitely, definitely, make that guy pass, put pressure on him. You know, don't give him time, don't pull back. Yeah, I rattle him. Yeah, I, I agree with that completely too. All right, good. We're in agreement in a lot of yeah, it, for, for which once, it's great, very rare. Yeah. For once, yeah, yeah. It, 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 and uh, I should have point six draft six quarterbacks next year in the draft. And you look <laughs> I wish we had back. six draft picks. Well, are we, are we are supposed to get a compensatory third pick, I believe. I don't remember for whom, but I remember we're getting one or two compensatory picks. Which yeah. means which means we we could draft a few quarterbacks, Marty. Just, but I don't think they will because they'll hurt Zach Wilson's feelings, don't you think? <laughs> well, you have to draft one. And, and listen, I I've been going to the draft <laughs> draft simulator simulator, and uh, whenever the Jets pick comes up, uh, Pendix from Washington is there. Pendix, yeah, Pendix. I, and, and I'm always choosing him. I love. That. I know he's got an injury history though. Yeah, you know, another example. Another example of not hurting Zach Wilson's feelings. They pulled this last year. When they just kept Mike White on the practice squad. They didn't want him as the backup in the game, so Zach was looking over his shoulder. They're doing the same thing now well, with Simeon and Boyle. Let yeah. me just ask you a, a scenario, a hypothetical. I'll start with Ray. Going back last year, if the Mike White episode where some of the guys printed T-shirts, if that didn't happen... And the locker room wasn't really as split as it was. Do you think they would have resigned him this year, Ray? Um, I I think they were a little limited because they were so intent on Rodgers that I don't think they were sure how much money they'd have to throw around after he got signed. You know, they, he took the thirty five million cut way later. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe you know. I'd have been happier if Sal went into this year saying Zach's uh, the backup, but he's on a short leash so that he knew and everybody, you know, that the whole team knew that they weren't going to put up with what happened last year, but it's all, you know, it's already, we've already blown that one out of the water. They, they're putting up with exactly that. Ralph. Um, okay. Yeah, no, I don't think, I don't think they would have signed him. I think, you know, the, they were going after Carr and Rogers and I, I didn't think they wanted it. I did another quarterback in the uh, in the room. That right, we're gonna have to pay some money to Ray. I cut you off. Did you want to add something on that? Or... No, I I just uh, I Ralph's right. I mean, I don't think they would have, but I don't think they even thought about it because of the guys they were, you know, right. chasing after and how much they 
be paying them. Yeah. All right. Let's get to the uh, over unders. Well, Marty, you forgot about uh, who's going to get more receptions, uh, Garrett oh, okay. Wilson or Devontae yeah. Adams? Yeah, let, let, let's do that. More receptions. Okay. Uh, Ray, why don't you start that? Devontae Adams or Garrett Wilson? The, the one thing I'll say this we're going to guess, but. If Garrett Wilson doesn't have more receptions than Devontae oh, yeah, so as a quarterback, yeah. it, things are worse than they're even <laughs> going out there. Yeah. So I'll, I'll start, I guess. I'm going to say Garrett Wilson. Go ahead, Ray. Um, same. I just I think our DBs are are better too, and I think uh, I think we can limit Adams. I, you know, they're not going to shut him out or anything, but I think they can limit him, especially if uh, if we do get the pressure on him that we should. Uh, the, so he isn't the what's his name O'Connell is that the quarterback? yeah O'Connell um, yeah yeah if, if he what defenses beside you know ours coming up what what who's he played the well, he the, played the, the Giants, Giants last week right the Giants yeah, yeah. I don't I don't well, know. actually have a pretty good defense at least they did against the yeah. Jets they, they <laughs> do yeah they they, they do the Raiders whipped them pretty good uh, but just so you really start or did I'm he sorry? Have, is that his only other start or did he have one before that. Uh, I think it's his third NFL start. Yeah, so I, I think that's it. Think yeah, that. but but just so you guys know, and I wrote down some facts <laughs> quickly before uh, we get to Ralph's answer. The the Raiders beat the Broncos, Packers, Patriots, and Jets. They uh, the Bears beat the Raiders in Week Seven, thirty to twelve. The Raiders are twenty <laughs> seventh in the league in scoring. That's after scoring thirty points against the Giants. Uh, they're 31st in yards per carry on offense. Let's see if the Jets could wrap them up. Uh, passing yards per game, they're 23rd. Now, most of the, that is with the Jimmy Garoppolo. So, But the one thing, I saw an interesting statistic. Uh, he saw pressure on just four of his 25 dropbacks a 16% rate that was second lowest in any starting quarterback in the league in week nine. So it looks like they're giving him some sort of protection to yeah. does drop back. Okay, Ralph, your feeling on uh, Garrett Wilson, Devontae Adams, who's going to have more receptions? I think I'll go with Garrett Wilson, but, uh, you know, with Zach at quarterback, you just never know. Um, you, you, yeah, you don't. All right, over unders. Our, our uh, most popular section. We're going to start with Ray Max Crosby, the very dangerous. I guess he's an edge pass rusher. Two and a half sacks. Ray, what do you think? Are they going to redo their offensive line schemes and you know do something with Billy Turner, even bad hand or not? Two and a half sacks over under. Well, I'm gonna you know just hope and and feel like they're gonna have learned something from the tape against the chargers and they're gonna do what you know we were saying about chipping crosby and have a little help and i'll say under okay uh i'm gonna go next i'm gonna say over i'm gonna say over but i don't think it's gonna be awful and you'll hear why when we make our game predictions ralph you go Actually, you know, since I made it out, uh, the uh, over unders. Actually, I thought two and a half. Since they give halves for sacks, sounds good. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say under, like Ray. You know, kind of hope that they learned their lesson last week with Bosa. Okay, <laughs> uh, Zach Wilson, who has a uh, tendency to fumble the ball for whatever reason, uh, one and a half <laughs> fumbles this game, Ralph. Go ahead, you start. Over. I, I think it's just gonna go over. I, I I feel like every time he sits in that pocket and freezes up. He doesn't protect the ball well, and it, 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 it worries me. Ray? Worries me, too, but I want to hope that it's one of those games that was so bad that he's going to improve. I can always hope. Uh, I'm going to say under. <laughs> I'm going to say under, and I just want to mention, mm -hmm. I think this is the game they're going to replace Zach Wilson at halftime. I really do if they're down. Okay. Well, well, under that. <laughs> no, and, and and that's why one reason I'm going under. I'm going to start the next one. Jets scoring 13 and a half points. I'm going to go over. I'm going to say that they're going to get one special team or one turnover touchdown. So I'm going to go over. Ray, you go. Uh hey, under. <laughs> it's, it's, 
pathetic when at 13 points you're asking an over under at 13 points when... <laughs> right but... all right ralph i i like the number 13 I, I can't see them scoring two touchdowns a touchdown and two field goals sounds good so i'll go under there you go all right and then there's a one true and false which i added i'll start with ralph uh, if Brees Hall gets a gain of seven or more yards <laughs> rushing or receiving, will there be a jet penalty? If Alan Lazard's on the field, I'll say yes. <laughs> <laughs> he says true. <laughs> Ray? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, if, if that, it'll be a, you know, illegal formation or some other stupid penalty that we. Right. Right. Uh, I'll say true too. Okay. I just thought of another over under actually. Go ahead. Uh jet penalties. Eight and a half over under. You know, I, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna say under, but I just want to quantify that saying I don't care if it's eight and a half nine penalties or three. It's when they get them. That's right. It's at the most crucial times, whether it's with two minutes ago in the game or if it's like third and twenty-three. That's when the Jets uh, do their penalties, and it just it drives me crazy. Just as crazy as Zach Wilson. Go ahead, Ray. I'm gonna say under. I think they're gonna really. I think they probably spent this whole week really hammering into them about just a lot of this stuff with formations and and blocking and everything. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try and stay positive on this one. Okay, Ralph. Uh, I'm going to stay, say under as well, uh, but you're right. The timing, the Jets have this magnificent talent for just absolute backbreaking penalties. Uh, they've been doing it for years. I mean, it's it's in their DNA, <laughs> but the last year or two, it's been insane. I mean, <laughs> I, the people I watched the game with last week who are not Jet fans looked at me and they 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 were in they were actually they were stunned they were speechless at how it kept happening like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I said, this is every week. I've been trying to tell you this. You know, is this like going back to the John Franklin Myers uh, rough no. penalty? On the you know, it goes back. It goes back to Mark Gastineau okay. to that San Diego playoff game where they stopped him on fourth down, and then the right. next. Yeah, and it, then they throw a touchdown to Antonio Gates and go into overtime. It just you know, it's been going on the whole history, Marty. It's, it's, it's incredible. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, game predictions before we get back to our classic Jets, uh, Jets trivia. Uh, I'm going to go first. I'm going to say, and this is why I'm saying the Jets are going to score more than 13 and a half points. I, I think they're going to win 2017. I truly believe they're going to be losing at halftime, like, uh, I don't know, 6 3 or 6 0. And they're going to bench Zach Wilson finally. And it's a good time to do it because they're on the road. And I think they're going to win. So I'm going to say they're going to win 2017. Ray? Uh, I think they can win this game. I don't, And I think – I know that uh, we, last week you said uh, this was the absolute worst timing for them to change coach. But I think we're fortunate it wasn't his first game um, because they were very fired up even, you know, they were at New York last week, right? That wasn't uh, – they didn't beat them in Vegas, did they? Thought they were in New York for that game. I anyway, think they were in, in Vegas. Were they in Vegas? Yeah, I think that. I, couldn't, I don't Vegas. remember. I didn't watch any of that when I just saw the outcome. But um, I just think at least we gave them a week to get over the the giddiness of a new coach. And, and they apparently really hated uh, Josh McDaniels a lot. So he stifled the locker room. So they got that out of the way at least. And I think that'll help us this week a little bit of a – come back to earth for the Raiders. So I think we can win. I'm I would say, you know, 23 to 17. Okay. Ralph. Uh, I think they can win the game too. Cause you know, obviously the quarterback <laughs> on the other side is not, although Marty always says that we, we have a way of making uh, journeymen or rookies look like hall of famers, but I'm going to say a very low scoring game, 13 to 10, like the giant game. Uh, okay. Let, I just want to say one thing about statistics, which drives me crazy. You know, some of these Zach supporters, and again, I, I hate dumping on Zach Wilson because I was a big fan of his in college. And up until the middle of last year, I was on his uh, side. Uh, last week, Wilson threw for like 240 yards. And Justin Herbert had his worst output yardage-wise in his career, 138 yards. Now, I just want to ask you guys one question. Who was the more effective quarterback in that game? 
Well, Justin Herbert, he made those three or four third down plays in a row. Exactly. Run. And, and he needed a third ball. down. Huh? And he ran the ball the one That's right. and made and it. And when he got sacked, you notice when the Jets sack quarterbacks, they're usually moving forward and they get him for like a three or four yard sack. With Wilson, he's going the wrong way oh, all the time. It's, it's brutal. Uh, but so, you know, statistics, you know, the, uh, a lot of them are garbage. And, you know, if you didn't watch the game, you would have – because I talked to a friend of mine who didn't watch the game. He said, hey, Wilson had really good numbers, and Herbert didn't. And I'm saying, <laughs> make a first down before I die, you know, on third down. You know, convert a third down. Just one one that's been... <laughs> I, I believe Browning Nagel threw over for 300 yards his first game. His I remember against Atlanta, against Atlanta. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. You, you know, they always say there are lies, damn lies, and statistics. Right, yeah. All right, Ralph. Oh, oh wait, Ray, go ahead, Ray. Thing. I just and and it's right. funny you brought that up, Ralph, because I was gonna just bring up a statistic point too. I was irritated. And this is what I meant to bring up last week, and I forgot was the Jets D got nailed for you know giving up what twenty points, and and all I could think was they got nailed for seven points on a half yard drive. Right. You remember the fumble yeah. return? Yeah, yeah. They didn't yeah. end up scoring on. And that counted against the defense. I'm just like, yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, it's, that, uh, that's where stats drive me nuts. They shouldn't even be touched on something. Like no, that. right. No. You're absolutely right, right. All right, Ralph, why don't you repeat your classic? Or you want me to repeat mine? It's up to you. Uh, I'll do my first because yours is actually a more interesting question. Mine is kind of a, com <laughs> a comical question. Uh, the new cradle of quarterbacks, I think, is now the nutmeg steak of state of Connecticut. You name two NFL quarterbacks who were born in the, the uh, great state of Connecticut. I don't know. Sam Hollow. <laughs> I don't know. Sam the, old, the old BU court, I have no idea. <laughs> Ray? Uh, per, no, you said he isn't a starter. No. Um, the, all right. The answer is Tim Boyle and uh, Trevor Simeon. <laughs> That's unbelievable. <laughs> Isn't that unbelievable? Hartford yeah. and Danbury. Sure about, uh, you know, That's incredible. Somebody, they were right. both. They're both from Connecticut. Yeah, uh, and, and and don't forget Dan Orlovsky is another one. So it is the cradle of great quarterbacks. Well, besides Pittsburgh. <laughs> all right. My question was: There were four quarterbacks that played for both the Raiders and the Jets. I named two, Dick Wood and uh, Marquise Tuasasopo. I want you to try to name the other oh. two. And let's say, I'll just tell you, it's it's post-1990 to give you, oh, okay. I give you that hit before. I'm sorry I didn't. Wow, Ray, so, uh, I'm counting on you, Ray, because these yeah. these uh, questions are, I can't handle these, you know. Usually I would just say Mark Sanchez, and that would probably cover it. But... <laughs> well, you, I, I was funny. going Ray, it's funny you say that. If you if you expand that thinking, you're on the right track. I always go to Jeff Blake uh, and um, <laughs> well, no, Greg McElroy. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you the first one. It's Josh McCown. Remember, oh yeah, he's uh, been a, yeah. Whenever he, you have a, a question <laughs> with a quarterback on the Jets and someone else, there are two obvious answers: uh, Fitzgerald and McCown. That's right. Yeah. They played for everyone. All right, the second one is interesting. I didn't know this. Well, then I'm not going to know it either. Ready? <laughs> Rick Myra. He played oh, on the God. Jets in 1999, and I guess the uh, Achilles year. Raiders in 2007. How wow, he hung around for a long time. Well, I and he cashed the paycheck doing nothing. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm sorry, not to, 2003. Oh, yeah. Interestingly, he had if we play with the Jets 1999, 49 is 2000. He retired. In 2001 and 2002, and I guess the Raiders, Oakland Raiders at the time, talked him into coming back, and he did come back. And really he regretted that. 1,200 yards, and then he ended up his last team. Guess who it was? Never guess. Uh, he never yeah. played. He didn't play a snap. He was on the <laughs> roster. Detroit Lions. Oh wow! Even the even he wasn't even good enough for the Detroit. Lions. They were probably zero sixteen that year too. That was probably, yeah, <laughs> no, it wasn't a loss. All right, so uh, listen, that's going to wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, again, <laughs> if have a great Veterans Day tomorrow, uh, Jets Rewind. Uh, we support all our vet veterans all uh, all over the globe for the, for our country. 
And uh, for Ray Clifford in uh, Ohio, Ralph Schrag, Massachusetts, and Marty Schupack in Valley Cottage, New York, enjoy the Jets game. Until next time.